today we have both a customer repair and one of our own GSIN CB950 hand portables and at least it has a external air phones, external aerial socket external power at 12 volts not 13.8 an earphone socket but not an extension mic like you'd get on the realistics now I can't help noticing on the monitor screen we seem to have got a dot all over the picture I don't know what the camera's playing at but that seems to be what it's doing today so I've taken the back off we're greeted with a screened thing I've never seen one of these before so we'll take it apart a bit more Okay, so let's. Uh, I've been writing down a few obvious points. I say I've not seen one of these before, and the trouble is I can't see the component numbers on the printed circuit board, so it's difficult to make up a chart. I've only found about a um, quarter of them. So it's kind of <clears throat> doing this is kind of an educated guess, but at least we can correct anything that we get wrong. Well, first of all, I can see it's off frequency. So should be we're on channel 20 and so we should be on 2779125 we're on 27097 so it's dropped as radios do with age and it's quite clear to me that the it's fun this isn't it it's quite clear to me that the trimmer is the green adjustment there so we'll get the appropriate tool I'm going to transmit and bring that on frequency oh that's worse doesn't matter how many years I do this I always turn them the wrong way There we are, spot on 27.79125, toggling 126, that's great. So clearly with the wax ones there are going to be the VCO, so we're not going to touch those. And I would think we start with the transmitter lineup with those two. So what are we doing? We're on high power and this is on an external power supply which is 12 volts, not 13.8. Take note of that course the last thing you want to do is to blow up the PA um, and this is allegedly a 4 watt radio but you know well it's doing um, looking carefully at the instrument it's doing what one and a half watts on full power so let's see if we can do better than that so we'll go for the first one, which I can't tell you what it is because I can't. Re oh, that's brought it up a little smidging. And then the next one, which is T8, that I can tell you, has also brought it up a little bit. So I'll go back on those just to make sure we've got no interaction. So we're now at um, 1.6 watts. Now the complaint with this radio is that the display is intermittent and it's low volume and muffled audio on receive. We'll start with transmitters, we always do. So let's have a look down here. To be honest, I think we'd be str we're straight in onto this one, whatever that is. Here, there, in the corner. And then...
Oh, that doesn't want to move. Just to add the ply the soldering iron. I don't know whether it's got wax in it or whether it's just 35 years of being stuck there. That's moved it. Oh, that's more like it. It's uh, just doing three watts now. So I'll just go back on the other adjustment. See if there's any interaction. Hand portable is always a bit of a compromise between range and battery life, but batteries of course are better than they used to be. I mean when these were made the best NICADs would have been 500 milliamp hour, you know, so chemistry changes, doesn't it? Right, I'm just going to pause the video and we'll just see see if I can find where deviation is off video. Okay, well I reckon that whichever variable resistor that one is, the second one down, you've got RV1, over RV2 is the top one, and I don't know what is the lower one, doesn't say. It could be RV1. I reckon that is deviation so we'll just get the little oscillator out set that over the microphone not so bad we're doing 1.8 no that's having no effect so I must be wrong so having had another look at the radio I find there's another one on its side so RV3 it's labelled as so I bet you it's that one. No, that has no effect either. This is this is a good guesswork job. So back on to record, and we find there's another preset which is vertical, just there. So I'll just make a note on my little plan and see whether that one is deviation. It's where you'd expect it to be, to be quite honest. It is. Brilliant. That's brought it up beautifully to 2.5. I will just give it a quick whistle test and make sure that it's uh, all right on that as well. <laughs> Wallow. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on. So I'll monitor it on the little receiver. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three, four, five. Wallow. Yep, that's the one. Good. So, I don't know whether it's possible to me to zoom in on that, but, and I'll use the, the yellow pen there. It's just there. There's a vertical preset. So that's deviation. So one of these is going to be the bar graph drive I would assume so I will have upset that so we'll go back into transmit and see if any of those affect that so it's not the bottom one it's not the top one. It's the one on its side. It's RV3. So RV3. Which is that one just there. 
is the bar graph drive. So we'll just come out a fraction, and so as you can see, we're doing about three watts. So we'll just get it so that it lights all the four lights. And as you can see, I can knock one out, knock two out. So there we have it. That's that's where we are now on low power. Let's see what it's doing. And the answer is 400 milliwatts, which is exactly where it should be. Now in the bottom of the radio is a coil just there. Don't know how you're supposed to get to it, but that is the field, um, the aerial trimming coil. And so we're going to have to presume that's correct. I don't think they, uh, there's any complaint that it's not uh, not working right in that direction because what we'd have to do is to it's it's plastic welded into the case. Let's see if we can just uh, zoom in on that. I'm not sure that we can. So just there, the aerial trimming coil is plastic welded into the case. So to adjust that, we would have to snap it away from the case, then hot glue gun it back. Well, I don't want to do that, and I've no reason to suspect it needs adjusting. But in sets where it's more readily available, we would check that with a field strength meter and the aerial uh, in its fully erected position. Now I'm just going to check power once again. Oops, we're on low power, high power. Yep, yeah, just doing around about 3 watts. So that seems fine. Now I haven't been able to make this display go out yet, but the but on the other hand, there's a resistor just here. And it's been soldered to that pad there. And it's kind of in out dry joints. Well, I've moved it away from that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strip down our one of these radios and see whether that's supposed to be soldered to that pad or not. So we'll just pop the video on pause. The answer on ours is that resistor, which is a slightly different color, is nowhere near that diode. So on the customer's one, where it's clearly been soldered there, it's been soldered there in error. So that might be why his uh, display was intermittent. Anyway, we'll go through for dry joints as well. For our one, it's slightly later, even if it's in worse condition. You see we've got different uh, resistors for the low power circuit. Uh, to the type used in the customers. Anyway, we're going to be t doing when we come to the on the air test. We'll be able to do like we did with the Murphy base station, and we'll be able to do a there and a back on the range test with the customers and with ours, and see if they perform the same. Right. Well, as soon as, as far as I'm concerned, that has actually concluded the transmit side of the Gson CB950. So we've been doing a bit of faffing about there. Uh, but in conclusion, we set the frequency with the trimmer capacitor there, the green one. We left the VCO well alone. We've gone for those two cores. The lower one is T8 for the transmit um, part of the circuit. And then we've trimmed that coil there and that coil there. And we've brought it up from 1.5 watts to 3 watts. So certainly that was an improvement. We've then done the deviation with the on its uh, vertically mounted preset, which is we don't know which RV number it is, but presumably it could be four. And then we've done the bar graph display, the transmit side of the bar graph display. We found that trimmer capacitor um, RV three. A preset resistor RV3, that one there was it. So there we are. We've done the transmit side of the GSON CB950. So what we'll now do 
is we'll look at the receiver and this is probably where it's going to be interesting because the customer's complaining it's not working properly.